All right, I want to get this last pair of tickets for me from Mudvayne. The Psychotherapy Sessions Tour. Mudvayne's back in your headlining spot. And they're bringing a lot of good bands with them. Cold Chamber, Guar, Nonpoint, Butcher Babies are all the support uh, for this tour. At least the Cleveland stop. If they're peeling off in other cities, that'll be from me. Friday, August 4th is when it goes down at Blossom. Tickets, info, all that. LiveNation.com. It's part of the Minutemen concert series. Same day as Buzzard Fest. There's a whole lot of rock and roll happening that day. So, a pair of tickets here for you, a Mudvayne and friends out of Blossom in August. Good luck, caller 10 216 578 1007 or 800 348 1007. Are you trying to make us all uncomfortable? Alan Cox. It's gross, it's weird, it's not right, it's not cool. And there's plenty more where that came from. Back to the Alan Cox Show on 100.7 WMMS. These guys are coming, too. I'll have Royal Blood tickets for you next week. Love these guys. Back in the States, uh, they're going to be playing September 19th at the Agora. I will also have KISS tickets for you next week. Uh, They added Cleveland and Cincinnati to their end-of-the-road world tour. So that brings them to the Romo Fijo for one last uh, go-round. Sunday, October 22nd, Uh, KISS is going to play. Those tickets are on sale as of this morning. Go to rocketmortgagefieldhouse.com, but I will have a pair for you every afternoon next week. I'll also get you set up for Buzzard Fest. That is also Friday, August 4th in North Ridgeville. Incubus Bush Live Filter, Welshly Arms, Kaleidoscope Kid, Winona Fighter. Buzzardfest.com if you want to peek in, but I'll have those tickets for you. And then you can join Bill on the Alan Cox Show uh, night on the Cleveland Funny Bus. Yeah. People are asking. We're doing these every Wednesday in June. We did them every Wednesday in May, and they went so well that we're doing them through June. You go to funnybus.net to buy tickets. I will have them for you Monday and Tuesday to win. But for people who are asking me who is doing when, the month of June is going to break out. Bill is going to be your host this coming Wednesday. I will host the 14th. Mary will host the 21st. What, what? And Pound Cake will host June 28th. And local comedians are your tour guides, and they're great. It's a it's a phenomenal time if you haven't been with us yet on the Cleveland Funny Bus. But the tickets do go quickly. Uh, I'll, I'll have them for you to win Monday and Tuesday, but funnybus.net. So that's how us hosting is going to break out. Bill, me, Mary, Pound Cake. Uh, the remaining Wednesdays in June, FYI. Hey, Mark. Yes. What up? Hey, how you doing? What's going on? Uh, uh, Bill, Bill and Mary and Pound Cake, too. Love to hate the show, man. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, I got a little information about uh, the Chick-fil-A thing. Okay. I realize that, you know, it's a uh, Christian-based organization, but that's not the reason that they're not open on Sundays. Okay. The reason that they're not open on Sundays is a marketing ploy. Their sales go up on Saturday and Monday because people in their brains, I'm not going to be able to get my Chick-fil-A tomorrow. I better go and get some now. Really? Yes. Huh. I wonder why they're the first ones to figure that out. Or or, you, or you're saying they're they... Damn, they're damn smart, man. <laughs> well, it's not, I guess it sounds like something that you try to see if you're right, and then if it pays off. Um, right. Yeah. Well, they pay, pay, they pay marketing people, you know what I'm saying? Right. Somebody obviously earned their money on that one. Yeah, maybe so. Okay, thank you, Mark. There's Mark and Illyria. I mean, the history of Chick-fil-A is that the guy who founded it was a big Jesus guy, and he didn't want it open on Sunday. But I, I So I think that's probably how it actually started, but from the marketing perspective, it happens to work, I guess. I mean, if, if people are going, I got to get it. So what do you do? You buy it on Saturday? and well, That's what he's saying. And then you can't, yeah. All right. Uh, The guy who uh, started Chick-fil-A started with a smaller restaurant called The Dwarf House. I don't know what that should tell you, but um, uh, there it is. Uh, People over at Geraci's brought uh, pizza. Is that what's going on? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And what did I do for you, Ellen? You brought me a napkin. No. Oh. She cut into a... I cut you a tiny little Ellen-sized slice. When I (laughs) handed it to him, I go... 
She made you a small slice. He goes, that's a small slice? Yeah. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> well, okay. So so Mary, yeah. so Mary, Bill brings this in. He goes, Mary, ha, ha, cut you an Allen-sized slice. And I said, that, is that a, a small slice? Well, because they're the big New York-style slices, so they're mm, giant. Yeah. So I grabbed a knife, and I was like, let me cut Allen a nice little sliver. Right. <laughs> so that way he doesn't he doesn't say that it's too much. Well, I appreciate being thought of. Yeah. Um, you I take a bite? A no, no, amount. I'm not. No. Um, He's not even going to eat it. No. We're on the air. Unbelievable. Plus, his food reviews suck. It's Friday. Remember when he did that uh, McRib thing and he was eating it and he goes, it's all right. Mm. (laughs) That was the whole review. (laughs) Yeah, well. (laughs) No, the savory combination of this and the that. Have you ever had a McRib? It's all right. (laughs) The savory combination of what? I don't know. The pickle, the the, the pickle the, and the goop really the, go well together. Yeah, the acid of the pickle mixed with the oh, savory barbecue it. sauce. With people have slight watched slight too tang. many. People are watching too many YouTube videos. That's not how people eat. That's how I eat. That's not how anybody yeah, ever. But it's how reviews happen. But it's not how anybody ever has reviewed food. If you ask a friend how the restaurant was, they go, "Yeah, it was pretty good." What'd you get? I got the black and blue steak. How was it? It was good. So when I had a McRib for the first time with my buddy Andy, who does Andy's Oreo reviews over on Instagram and YouTube, I think he's doing some new ones, actually. There are way more different varieties of Oreo than there are McRibs. Uh, I had never had one before. And you recall I didn't finish it either. No. You know how winophiles will put their nose in, right? People who pretend to know a lot about wine. They'll put their nose in, and they'll take a sip, and then they'll swish it around, but they won't swallow it. They'll put it in the nearby spittoon. That's what I was doing with the McRib. I didn't spit it out. I took a bite, and then I was like, oh, uh, you should have written me a script for that, Mary. Or I, I should have written my own, I guess. Ooh, the the sauce really dances with the bun. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Could help you with that. Well, tell you what. I'll take a bite of this. Okay. okay. Let's see how you want, me, you want me to take a bite of the yeah. Jerry's okay. pizza? That's bite, the hot bite, Tito. Bite, 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 I'm sorry, bite, what? Bite, that, bite. Pe- that slice is called the hot Tito. The it's hot Tito. Pepperoni sausage hot honey drizzle. Men prefer a hot Tito with no O. Hey, hey, hey oh, Bill. Hey. Because I'm. A uh, t- Tito. Right. Tito's and so. <laughs> yeah, right. A hot, yeah. <laughs> Get it? Ugh, didn't even get any pepperoni in it. This mm. bite. There was, there was a piece on the tip. There was yeah, meat on the tip, Bill. I tried to get you a little bit of everything, a little bit of honey, a little bit of crust, a little bit of Thank you. meat. A little bit of crust. Yeah. I think the crust undergirds the whole piece, How, right? How's the, how's the sauces and meats dancing? Oh, Are they dancing oh, together? They're dancing. They're doing a plie right on my tongue. Yeah. If you had to pick yeah. a ballet that best describes <laughs> what type of ballet dance are they doing? Nutcracker? Oh, what kind of? Oh, a ba- um, uh, Don Quixote. I don't know. Ooh, not Jersey um, Boys. <laughs> is Jersey Boys a ballet? Oh, you mean a Broadway show? I meant like a musical, yeah. No. Oh, not a ballet. Okay. Not like the dance of the sugar plum fairies or Actually, anything? Actually, like? I, I was thinking ballet and then I mixed it up. Okay. I retreat my second statement. And it's the Swan Lake of Pizzas. There How you do go. you like that? There you All go. right, there you go. Natalie Portman. Uh, Black Swan. Oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> Great movie, though. That's a good time, boy. That was Darren Aronofsky, wasn't it? Did he do Black Swan? I think so. Yeah. I just thought it was Swan Lake. <laughs> well, it is in the movie. That's yeah. why it's Black Swan. But I still haven't seen The Whale. People are telling me to watch it's The Whale. So, I've, so here's what I did. Yeah. I read, like, the in-detail Wikipedia page for it, and it teared me up just reading that. And I've heard that it's, like, horrifically sad. So I'm like, I don't know that I can handle this. Like, if just reading the plot made me upset, Okay. Well, yeah, okay. It's just a movie that I guess I should have seen at the time because now I won't remember that I have. It's not top of mind. I still have to see John Wick 4. I'm trying to get my daughter to go to Spider-Man this weekend. That's like, she likes, likes likes-ish Spider-Man. And that Into the Multiverse or whatever is this, the sequel is out Mm -hmm. this weekend. And I'd like to take her to that because I'd like to see it. And if I can get her to go along... Uh, all the better. Then you have an excuse. Then I have an excuse. That's right. Yeah, I'm always. It worked with the uh, worked with the Mario Brothers movie. She loved that. It was so cute. Um, she knew more about the game thing than I did. But uh, I'm trying to get. Uh, yeah, I thought if we went to see Spider Man, that'd be fun. If you listen to us on iHeartRadio from out of state, tell me where John is up in Buffalo. Kelly listens in Milwaukee. 
Thomas is in Orting, Washington. Andrew listens in Wilmore, Kentucky. Mark's in Bailey, Colorado. And we have a lot of people in Phoenix, Arizona, which is basically out of water. And it's not like people didn't see this coming, but the entire state of Arizona has uh, put limits on construction in the Phoenix metropolitan area because the groundwater is going away. And so, uh, but again, Phoenix, people are still moving there. Even though, with all due respect to the citizens, the city, there's no vibe to Phoenix. There's no, like, you don't get a feeling in Phoenix, right? It's a city of strip malls and concrete. It's like Orlando. So many strip malls, dude. It's parking lots and strip malls, and it's, you know. uh, But uh, the water is going away. And they can't meet whatever additional development demand is coming. It's still a city that's blowing up. It's still a that's the weird thing too about climate change and water going away is you think about your immediate thought is, wow, this will suck because in an extreme case, what if you turn on your tap and nothing's there? But you have to kind of go, if you will, downstream and think of all of the industries that are impacted by water going away. You know, we're rolling out this rock and buzzard brew, right? What if there was no water? Think about all the companies that make beer or make any beverage whatsoever. Or any food or any Uh, Yeah, name it. I mean, you know. Everything needs water. It's it's not just about the water. I mean, it's about a billion other things that. So Phoenix is in, uh, they are in bad shape. uh, Because they do not have or will not have uh, water that's required. You know, somebody wants to put up a housing development, you need water going through the pipes. And they're like, we're not going to have it or businesses and farms. So the Phoenix metropolitan area is still the fastest growing part of the United States. People still move in there. Back in the day, the joke was Phoenix was for people who couldn't hack it in L.A. And for a while, that was probably pretty solid. But then people kept moving there and they're moving there and moving there. But it's it's going away. You know, and so they're trying to kind of legislate their way out of a lot of things by conservation things. And, you know, you can't mow your lawn or or rather you can't water your lawn. You get fined in the western part of the country, you know, if you're watering your lawn. If you live in certain parts of Los Angeles, you can get an $800 ticket if somebody drives by and your sprinkler's on. The situation with that is people who want a nice lawn, they're going to rat out their neighbors. You don't even have to rely on a squad car driving by and seeing you with the, you know, your neighbors are going to rat you out because they're like, hey, man, I wanted it, you know, but Phoenix Scottsdale, there's also a lot of people that just have stone lawns. They don't have grass at all. That would be nice, too. Although I will say this. It's not nice. Brian's it's parents- hell on your mower. <laughs> Brian's parents have a house in Goodyear, and that was, like, the first time we went there and stayed in their development. Like, no one had grass. And I, I like, logically that makes sense, but it's still kind of shocking to see Yeah. when, you're like, they live in this big, giant development that has, like, a pool and a lake and stuff. So we're, like, walking from the house to the lake, and I'm like, damn, dude, there's, like— there's nothing green here except cacti. Like, that's it. And Brian was like, yeah, this is a desert. Like, yeah. What did you think was going to happen? Right. Yeah. Yeah, when we were out there, Gwen and I were kind of like, you know, it's we were in Sedona, which, you know, different parts of Arizona are different, but Sedona's beautiful. But she was still like, I don't know that I could live in the desert. I don't know if I could live in a desert city. I mean, it's fun to visit, but it's still blown up. People are moving out there. Love it. Brian wants to move out there. Does he? That's where he wants to have like a retirement house is Sedona. He's like, it's beautiful. It's perfect. He, yeah. lo- he loves everything about that. Just city. in time for there to be no water. No yeah, right. water. <laughs> I, I don't know. Call me crazy. I like water. <laughs> yeah. I'm I like a water, water too. I'm a water guy. What can I say? I, just, I like water. Water and breathable air are like my, I, I love them. Top two. I love them. Hipster Bill over here. Yeah, right. There's water and air. Mm-hmm. Breathable air, not just like I want to potable water, breathable air. He's yeah. got conditions, ladies and gentlemen. I got standards. You got to have standards. I was reading about. Uh, you might have noticed it's been quite some time since it's rained here. Yeah, I was reading about a drought. The drought monitor in Ohio is registering drought because it's been almost two weeks since it rained in Cleveland. 
Doesn't that sound like that's a long time for us? Yes. But out west, out west like it's a month. Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Two weeks. Right. That's nothing. But it's also warm. You know, this is another El Nino summer that's coming too, which is Spanish for, you'll recall, the Nino. The Nino. That's right. Chris Farley taught us that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so and that means many other lessons. <laughs> the uh, right, the the biggest lesson that Chris Farley taught us: if you're going to pass out, don't block the door. A very difficult for people to get in. So it's going to be an, another El Nino summer where the Pacific Ocean is really, really warm underneath, and that roils up, and then it just drives the temperatures up. I felt like it went from sixties to eighties in a week. Has it been 80s yet? It's been like it's, steadily mid 70s. No, it, in Has Berea, it gotten, it's cracked. It's been like 85 every single oh, day yeah? this week. Like we shut the whole house down. Like pulled it down the uh, black room blackening curtains, blackout curtains. That's what's yeah. called. Room, so the, room, room blackening, blackening curtains. curtains. We pulled down the black face curtains. Uh. <laughs> I was like, what the hell are these things called? Well, and, and they're, they're so good that you can wear black face in your house, and no one can see you doing it, so you don't get in trouble. <laughs> it was no cut little they, eye holes in the drapes because they like help. Uh, they're supposed to help save energy too. Yes. That it like keeps the house cool on the inside. Yep. So we like have all week. We've had them completely drawn and and kept the air on, and it's been. Freaking you know, hot, dude. and it's really again when I talk about the things that you don't don't realize would directly affect. You know, we're talking about McDonald's a while ago. They had a big plan to roll out the McDLT again, right? And they had to really uh, abort it because they were like, "Look, this thing is contingent on the hot side being hot and the cool side being cool." Martin Molloy's sister invented the box for that. I've never even heard of that. So, what do you mean invented the box? She invented the two-sided box. She like designed it. I think it, yeah. they were around. She designed it. She designed a box for yeah. the McDLT cuz they cuz they have to manufacture them. Right, so, but two-sided boxes st- existed. Not in fast food. Not like right. that. She get rich off that? No. Who'd she work for? Styrofoam Inc. Or? No, she worked for McDonald's. That was her job. Oh, it's their IP. Yeah. Oh, that styrofoam clamshell box is theirs. Right, but it was like the one that had it, like two sections. So. Right. Yeah. Because you had the hot side hot and the cool side cool, and your vegetables on the other side. Oh, well, good for her. Yeah, they should just get rid of the vegetables, and just have the hot side. Just have the hot side. Yeah. You know, people, those OG McDLT boxes, people sell them online, like eBay has them. I bet. Yeah. There's crazy McDonald's collectors out there. I guess there would be, wouldn't yeah. there? Does she have any, like, prototypes? I don't know. I don't really hang out hmm. with her. I hang out with him. Circumstantial evidence. Prove it. You mean anecdotal evidence. God damn it. I'm batting a thousand today. Everything I say is wrong. Not everything. That wasn't wrong. <laughs> Mary's dumb anecdotal evidence. But, oh, it looks like there's a lot of evidence. That enough. There's thousands of examples to prove it is a fact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Listen, everything old is new again, okay? We were talking about Jared Polis the other day, who is the governor of Colorado, trying to make a bet with DeSantis because the Nuggets, who murdered the Heat last night, by the way, uh, the, uh, 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 the Nuggets... And the Heat are in the NBA Finals. And Jared Polis said, hey, ha ha, if the Nuggets win the championship, we'll take Disney. Uh, since you clearly don't want it, whatever. Um, but I was reading an article about how it was Colorado's amazing idea, their ingenious idea for solving the housing crisis. And George Carlin had figured this out 30 years ago, and that's exactly what they're trying to do in Colorado. Golf courses. Perfect. Golf courses. Just what we need. Plenty of good land in nice neighborhoods, land that is currently being wasted on a meaningless, mindless activity engaged in primarily by white, well-to-do male businessmen who use the game to get together to make deals to carve this country up a little finer among themselves. 30 years ago, George Carlin in Jammin' in New York was like, hey, golf courses, put low-cost housing there. Who's this guy? Uh, see me after the show, Bill. Uh, there's a comedian. I would like to explain to it right now. Uh, he was a merrymaker named George Carlin. 
Uh, and uh, he was around for quite a while. I think he did a couple of live specials and this is over him, the like, years. This is him talking between songs? That is uh, he was like between, a music- <laughs> between songs. Yeah, he was like, he's like an artist? Yeah, he's like an artist, like you know, a singer-songwriter, and then in between songs he would just go on little rants? Is in between that- songs he would go yeah. on little rants, yes. yep. He started in radio, but mm-hmm. then he kind of moved on and did some other things. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I'll get you hip to him in the break. I think you'll enjoy him. Now, he's been dead for a while, as the best ones always are. But I just thought it was so someday. Funny. <laughs> someday courses? I'll be dead for a while, and then it'll be like, oh, yeah, one of the best. Did you say golf courses or golf courses? I said golf courses. Golf. What did you say? Golf courses. Golf courses. Golf there you courses. go. Sure. Ooh, golf courses sounds fun too. Golf courses. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Talk about your blackout curtains. Yeah. Those are all over the place. <laughs> All right, I got to take a break. If you want to send a text, 35192 to get me there. AlanCoxShow.com is where you can watch live, and we'll be back. This is The Alan Cox Show. Everywhere on.